Hello and welcome to the section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to work our first Thevenin equivalent problem, which is on the board here. So we have a circuit, 72 volt source, lots of different types of or values of resistances, and we have two terminals that we've labeled A and B. And the question is very simply, find the Thevenin equivalent circuit uh, relative to terminals A and B. So what this basically means is that if I wrap this entire circuit in a black box, only terminals A and B sticking out the two holes. What I'm trying to do is find an equivalent voltage source and an equivalent Thevenin resistance that would go inside that a new box that would behave exactly the same as this one would behave with respect to terminals A and B. And that's why I say it's going to matter um, what terminals you're, you're looking between. You need to define the two terminals because basically what you're doing is you're, you're analyzing the circuit from the point of view of these two terminals A and B. All right. So the first thing, you know, we've erased the board already, but Thevenin equivalent in theory is easy. All you need to do is you find the open circuit voltage between A and B. Open circuit voltage. That's the Thevenin equivalent voltage. And then we have the rules to, amp to find out what the Thevenin equivalent resistance is. But let's go ahead and tackle the uh, Thevenin equivalent voltage. How do you think we can find the open circuit voltage? Well, it's already open circuit here. We have two terminals here, A and B. There's nothing connected, so it's open circuit. So really what we're trying to find, when you really think about it, is the voltage between A and B is the Thevenin equivalent voltage. There doesn't have to be anything connected between A and B to have a voltage between them. We've seen enough problems where I've sh sort of showed you that. There is a potential up here at A relative to terminal B. This could be 20 volts, this could be 100 volts, whatever. Any two points in a circuit is going to have some kind of potential difference across them. Usually we're measuring these potential difference across resistances because there's a voltage drop through the resistor because there's current flowing through the resistor. There is absolutely no current flowing directly between A and B but there's still a voltage across there. It's the same as a nine volt battery or any kind of battery. You pull it out of your pocket, you have two terminals. There's nothing connected across those terminals, but you know that there's nine volts potential difference across the two terminals. So you can have voltage drop with no current flow at all. And that's what we have here. So it's open circuit, but there's still a voltage. It's like 20 volts or 50 volts, whatever it ends up being is going to be some voltage that you can measure with a meter, no current, but there's a potential to do work, and that's the electric potential, the voltage that we always talk about. So we need to figure out what it is. Um, what I am going to recommend is that you get nice and warm and fuzzy with mesh currents. You can use node voltages. I mean, absolutely you could. I mean, this is kind of a node voltage uh, between this node here and, and whatever ground potential. So you could definitely do node voltage, it's fine. I just find that over the years, I'm, I'm more comfortable with mesh currents. Plus, there's really only two meshes we care about. So let's label this uh, I sub one, mesh one, and we'll label this one I sub two. You might think there's a mesh here, but there really isn't because this is not a closed circuit here. There's no mesh current over here because this is just open. Even though we're trying to find this voltage, this is not closed. So this is not a mesh like we've had in the other problems. So really this problem looks complicated, but it's really only two mesh equations that we need to write. And I know you may not be able to see, you know, how we're going to go from mesh current to calculating V Thevenin in here, but let's go ahead and work through it and I promise it'll become clear. So let's go ahead and solve this problem for mesh currents I1 and I sub 2. All right. So let's go ahead and work first with mesh loop number one. So let's start here. We're going through 72 